Right, how's it going? Let's make ourselves a blowtorch. Let's jump over to the bench and I'll show you the design that I've come up with. Right, what we're going to do is create ourselves a naturally aspirated blowtorch. This is your burn chamber or your pipe and then this is your gas inlet. Now what we're going to do is rely on the pressure of the gas to create a low pressure zone just in front of the nozzle. That's going to draw as much air in as possible through the venturi effect. Now I'm not sure whether or not the holes in front, in line or behind the nozzle is going to be the most effective so we're going to have to test that out as well as whether or not we need to adjust the airflow so we can get complete combustion or a stoichiometric burn. Right, let's jump outside and start cutting some pipe out so we can do some tests. To the observant viewer you might have noticed that there's a speckle of rust just on this bit of pipe. So we're just going to tickle it with the Y wheel just to knock that little bit of rust off. It's just surface rust mind you, it's not, uh, not all the way through. Right, so we've got ourselves a nice bit of pipe, now we need to jump to the plasma cutter to cut out a cap for this. We've drilled the hole completely off centre, which is perfect. Now we need to tap it with a quarter inch BSP. Right, so we're just about to weld it up. I'm just going to weld it with TIG just so we get a nicer weld. Right, fantastic. Some very nice porous welds. Right, all welded up. I know it's a bit porous, but that's okay. Um, it's good enough for testing. We're going to thread everything together, connect to the propane tank to do our initial test to make sure that there is enough airflow, and if not, then we can start addressing that. Uh, we're going to thread everything together with white Teflon. You should be using yellow Teflon as this is gas, but I can't get hold of any, as well as I can only get hold of air hose at the time being. I've got three meters of this, so I can keep the gas really far away while doing it in testing, as well as leak checking. Right, let's uh, thread this together. Right, that's that. Let's get ourselves some propane and do a test outside. I've just sprayed everything with soap and water and spent the last half an hour fixing all the leaks. I had to use some janky air fittings and replace some barb fittings and some joiners. Anyway, it doesn't leak now, so let's uh, do a test run. The test went successful. The flame was bright yellow, which to me indicates that it is running a bit too rich. So just to check that, I got the air compressor blew air through the back here, and it completely changed the profile of the flame. It went blue and was roaring. So that does confirm that we are running a bit rich. Now the way we're gonna address this issue is by drilling a set of holes just further up past the nozzle. I'm hoping that will give us a good airflow, as well as we can start adding a collar so we can adjust the airflow on the blowtorch itself. Right, let's uh, jump to the drill press and uh, drill the holes. Right, so we've got a mark at 30 mil. We now want four holes or five holes or whatever amount of holes you want around that, cent that mark there. We want them all perpendicular and square to the pipe. And we also want the spacings to be even. Now the way I'm going to achieve that, rather than just working it out like a normal person, I'm going to get myself a bit of paper, line it up with a mark. Now I've actually already cut this so I know that it is the circumference of the pipe already. As you can see, it's circumference. Now before we go and mark our line, we want to get that bit of paper, we're going to fold it in half, and then fold it in half again. Right, now that we've got this bit of paper folded four times, we now have four even creases. Wrap that back around. Right, now that we've got the holes all drilled and cleaned up, we can now do another test run to make sure this is enough airflow. If it's not, then we can start adding more holes. Right, back outside and let's do another test. Right, so I just want to say that that is a success. It burns amazing. My only concern is that where the flame is actually burning inside the pipe, and I was kind of hoping that it would burn out the end. So I've got a little thing that I want to test, which is like inserting a rod that will diffuse and break up the airflow. I think that's just so we can get the mixing further down, uh, so the fire actually is coming outside the end. Yeah, perfect. Let's uh, create a variator. Unfortunately, I didn't really think of this through, but because I drilled the holes before cutting the pipe and then we spread it, the holes do not line up. Right, continuing the testing, I really want to share this with you, the effect that this end piece has. Right. And then without it... Won't even lie. 
Right, we'll jump to the bench and I'll show you what's happening. Right. What has changed this blowtorch from being a really average to a really effective one is this little piece here. Now it does two major things. It acts like a spark resistor, so it stops the flames from traveling down the whole tube and burning at the nozzle tip here. Now the reason that's so important is now this whole thing doesn't get superheated. The plastic tube that goes in the end here that feeds the gas doesn't melt, as well as you are able to grab and adjust the airflow. Now the other thing that it does is it creates a bit of a vortex which thoroughly mixes the gas and the air together so you get complete combustion. So this this little vortex piece has made a huge difference in the whole profile of the torch. Now, the other thing that we need to start looking at for Mark II is to change the flow of gas. We're burning far too much gas, and so we need to reduce that. I've got a couple ideas on how we're going to do that. Right, let's jump over and start doing Mark II so we can implement all these changes and create a really effective and efficient torch. Onto that. So with Mark II, we've pretty much followed the same steps that we did with Mark I, but we've refined them. The biggest change is the nozzle. Now what we've done here is got a much longer riser with a narrower tip. The tip itself is actually a plasma tip. It's 0.8 millimeters in diameter. That just gives us the ability to reduce the airflow like I wanted. Now the other thing, by having it so long, what we've done here is we've made the gas flow protrude just past the air inlets. Now that's just because I found even in line, they were much more efficient. And the biggest issue with them being in line was that some gas actually came back. So we want the nozzle to be just just past the air holes and I'm thinking that's going to give us the best airflow possible. Right, let's jump over to the welder and start welding this up. I'm going to do TIG until I start realizing that uh, I'm terrible at it and then I'll start migging the rest of it. Right, let's uh, get on with it, hey? That's acceptable. May or may not have dipped the tip a little bit, but that's okay. We weren't watching, were you? Right, swapped over to Meg for no other reason than I choose to. It's uh, not that I tried to already weld one of these in there with TIG and then blow a hole in the wall and then have to cut it all out and grind it back, fix it over the last half an hour or anything. Um, so yeah, let's um, weld it together with Meg because I, um, I choose to. the last thing we've got to solve is the regulator. Now it's kind of been sitting on the ground for testing so what I'm going to do is make myself a bracket that lets me clip to the top of this tank. Right so now you can see how the bracket's going to work. It is simply held in by the threads on each side through a hole. Now it is going to be loosely fitting in there. Now that's good because we can now thread this BSP fittings properly all the way in and so the threads actually seat and seal properly. Anyway let's start making the rest of this. Right, now you can see how this is going to work. We ourselves our hooks and ourselves a bent bar that will join the two hooks together. And then once we've done that, then we can mount the regulator to the bar. Now obviously welding this up is going to be a little bit difficult because we can't weld on top of the gas tank. So we're probably just going to have to do some very light tacks and do some testing and just work our position from there. Right, let's uh, jump over to the welder and uh, tack this up, I guess. I can't think of any other way to demonstrate how hot it gets, so we're going to just uh, chuck a bit of steel in front of it and see how quick it heats up. It's 40 by 40 angle, 5 mil thick. Um, pretty scientific around here. What a test. That was very scientific. It got over 700 degrees. It was just glowing. I think the biggest tell is that my table is now completely burnt, and I melted a magnet, so whatever that means, the torch can do, so... Primo, jump inside, I'll uh... Right, 
After that conclusive testing, we can tell that the blowtorch works. Uh, I'm really happy with the way the variator sits. It just sits perfectly on top of the propane tank and keeps it right out the way. The port itself works fantastically. It puts out so much heat. It, the smaller nozzle really made a huge difference. The air variator works flawlessly and the vortex thing just makes a, an incredible difference. My only concern with this is when you turn the gas off and the pressure drops, the flame can actually travel down the tube. It means it heats the tube up for about two seconds. Uh, it's not a huge deal, but it's just something to be aware of. Uh, you could probably put another vortex thing in, it might act as a double baffle and it could stop that, but it is only when you turn it off and it is for about two seconds. So as long as you're aware of it, it is okay. Apart from that, yeah, really happy with how this turned out. Right, thanks for watching, I'll uh, catch you next time. Only took four attempts to get the vortex thing to work. <laughs>